Amen. This morning we are almost come to the end of our relationship series and today we are talking about healthy boundaries and how to handle difficult people and difficult situations, you know. So we got a new car last year and our car came with fantastic features. And if a new, if another car comes close by, it goes beep, 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 beep. And even while I'm reversing, there's another car passing by, it'll warn me, don't come too far, there's another car going, which is, which is so good. And the, the coolest option is called the lane assistance. So if I go wave a little bit to the next lane without putting the indicator on, it'll tell me, beep, 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 you're going outside your lane. <laughs> uh, or even if I go close to the end of the railing, it'll, it'll warn me. So many noise come. You know that, Collie, yes, isn't it? You've traveled with us. Your car sings, she says. Yeah, it has got a lot of warning signs. And as I was preparing for this, and that came to my mind because how many of you can say or um, wish that we have some lane assistance in our life there is some kind of noise that come up when someone comes too much into your lane or when you go too much into somebody's lane stay on your lane don't go across your boundary amen so it is so good to set some boundaries when we live our life and when we read in genesis god created a man in his own image so it is so important that we honor people we respect others and but not always that we come across people who have the same um, respect or same values that you have. Sometimes we come across some difficult people or some toxic work environment or a toxic marriage relationship and you there are different circumstances that you come across and it is not very uncomfortable and you have this value of honoring and respecting others but not everybody else has the same values and as Christians how do we handle difficult people or difficult situations there are usually two kinds of people and either they fight or flee <laughs> and I used to be in that second category I would flee the moment I see chaos I will quit I will flee I leave my job I would do anything to run out of that circumstance and um, but what I realized every time I do not fight my Goliath that Goliath come chasing after me so I will go take another job that Goliath is waiting for me to fight me. I go into another friend's circle relationship that Goliath is waiting for me because I did not kill that Goliath in the first place. So any Goliaths that you do not kill will keep following you wherever you go. I don't know if you have seen that in the past. So at one point I realized I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to run. I'm going to face these challenges. But then how do I face this challenge? And sometimes always it is, I don't like a murky uh, surrounding. So I take all the blame, let people win and treat, allow people to treat me as trash. And that is not good either. That's not healthy either. So um, every time we flee, or when we run or quit, it is a response out of fear. And anybody who fight, who are fiercy, who is angry, who is controlling and manipulative, they are also responding out of fear. So it's unhealthy both ways. You either fight or flee, but if it is a response out of fear, it is unhealthy. But there is a third method that the Bible talks about. When you deal with conflict, you deal it with grace and you set boundaries to protect yourself and for, uh, for others to know this is the limit they can cross and they cannot cross, right? So 
as I always say, conflict resolution is a skill that we have to learn at some point, whether you're in a workplace, office environment, or at home, family, extended family, everywhere, you will see conflicts coming up. And we need to deal it with grace. I'm going to give you some practical tips. Honestly, I was telling um, Kalia today, and also, if you need to share this message to someone, do it. It will come on Monday on YouTube. If you need to do that, if someone need to hear this, share it with them. These are practical things we need to learn and apply it. And then when you come across conflict, when you come across uh, some issues uh, or someone mm, blamed you or um, uh, put words on about you or said something about you, don't jump into solving a um, problem immediately. When you jump too quickly to resolve a problem, you will deal with with such emotion, with anger, and you will always going to put finger on them. Yeah. You won't be able to see things clearly. The first thing, first, deal yourself with grace. Spend time in the presence of the Lord. However long it takes, allow the Lord to bring healing into your life. Because I know we need to forgive them. But to let go of those hurts and the wounds of, of the things that somebody has done to you or said to you, it may take a while. So spend that time. I love God to bring healing and restoration into your life first. And then, now you are ready, emotionally strong. Now you talk to that person. And as I said, don't flee and don't fight, but you handle it with grace first I love God to bring healing into your life and then you bring this matter up with that person so when you take it to that person now you're not emotionally angry you're not emotionally hurt you're not crying you're not wounded you're you're healed already and now you are in a position to mentally think it the right way and you present it to them and you handle it with grace. Now you're not um, pointing finger at them or, or doing it with condemnation. You can do it well. Amen? Yeah. And now the second one, setting boundaries. And this is where I'm going to park today. I'm going to take some time to talk about setting healthy boundaries. Sometimes we can say, um, yes. Uh, to people where, where, when we don't really mean to say yes out of to please people or out of fear of missing out, FOMO they call it, or fear of for people we might say yes. Someone said like this, our life is a collection of what we've said yes and no to. And so Jesus said, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. When you are saying yes with your lips, and but you're not comfortable on the inside, you cannot carry on for too long. And um, so you need to be careful that you don't come across authentic, like Andre shared today. We need to be authentic all, always, right? So when you say something with your lips and something else is um, bothering you on the inside, it won't go on for too long. So we need to um, set boundaries. You should learn to set boundaries to continue your relationship well. First one, boundaries for ourselves. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 6 says like this. Do not stare at me because I'm dark, because I'm darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me and made me take care of the vineyards. My own vineyard I had to neglect. Here this young girl is giving an explanation of her condition that she was taking care of someone else's vineyard and that she neglected her own. Vineyard talk about your heart. Sometimes we end up taking care of everyone else's need and we run around meeting other people's need. What happens in that process? You ignore your heart, your field, your family, your business, your blessings that God has given in your hand to take care of. 
setting as boundaries is something that we all need to learn. The moment we hear boundaries, some of us feel guilty as Christians. I used to be in that place. And because we, as Christians, we think, oh, I need to be always available. I need to show my other cheek all the time. I need to go the extra mile. And the Bible says you need to lay down your life for your friends. And that's what I have to do all the time. I'm not denying all that. That is true. That is what the word of God says. But Liza Turkis, she's an author of Good Boundaries and Good Buys. She's written like this. Um, she, that's what she said. First, you need to have the confidence that it is okay to have boundaries. It should be out of love, but not out of punishment to somebody or out of control or manipulation. We have this idea that boundaries are unbiblical. Yes, lay down your life for your friends. Jesus set an example by laying down his life by going to the cross. But Jesus did that for higher purpose, but not to enable bad behavior to continue. Did you hear me? Did you hear me right? You're not going to let another person's bad behavior to continue by not setting boundaries. Amen. Well, I hear this, I see this a lot when I pray for people and I counsel for people. This is something that we become so naive and we let people in without setting boundaries and you are hurt most of the time. We need to always check the intentions behind if they are asking if there is a genuine reason that is something else that you go out of the way and you do it yes of course we do it always keep check the intentions as i just now read from song of songs her stepbrothers bullied her to take care of their vineyard and she neglected her own as i shared the first week it starts with us if I don't take care of, if I don't value, if I don't respect myself, I'm going to let this say other people do the same to me. Yeah. Amen. It starts with us. If you don't have good value, respect for yourself, you will let people do the same thing to you. Yeah. I'm guilty of that, actually. I've never knew boundaries, how that works, and um, I allow people to walk or walk in and out of my life any time and with my time and all that there was one particular time some years ago i would pick up the call any time of the day or or um, spend hours and hours praying for them or counsel them and all that that that's okay i i love doing that praying for spending time with people but uh, this one particular lady, she started to cling on to me for a long time, for nearly two years. And you are thinking, I can hear you thinking, oh, really? After six months, you didn't you get it? No, I did not. I, every almost once a week or once in two weeks, she would call me and she will dump all her problems, uh, all about the children and the husband and the work and, and her dreams and then dream interpretation. And it will go on like a cycle. And more than and two years it went on regularly and one day I said um, uh, we were in the middle of a very busy moment uh, during that time we were moving house we were shifting or something like that and uh, I then, uh, then I told her today I won't be able to spend more time with you um, and she asked me oh what is going on and that's when I realized for well, hours together I have spent time with her and she has no clue what is going on in my life because she has never taken the time to find out how I'm doing, or how things are going on with my life. It was all about her problem and never ending problem. But that kind of disturbed me. So I was seeking the Lord, God, counsel me. What do I do? Is that okay? Is that right? Is this how we live our lives? Is this how, is it part of ministry? Is this what we do? And I felt the Lord tell me, Judy, you don't have to be the middle person. You know that, right? And I heard the Lord say, you don't have to be Mother Mary to her. That was like an ouch moment. That is kind of God is saying, she can come straight to me. And she's not that unbeliever or something. There are seasons people walk through. 
There are times that people walk through very difficult time. I know it is so important to have people around you and at that season of their life to have some intercessors, some people to walk with them and pray with them. It is so important. But if I'm letting people to you become the one-stop shop for all their needs, I am enabling them a bad behavior to continue in your life. Amen. I have come across people who open their doors and now they don't know where to set the boundaries. And um, I realized I never had boundaries. I allowed people to come and steal my time, steal my energy, steal my family time, my time alone with God. It's not their fault. It's my fault because I never had proper boundaries. Galatians 6.2 says, carry each other's burden. Some burdens are too heavy to carry it alone. Yes, you walk alongside to help them, but check you are not, a, you are not enabling any bad behavior in the other person's life. Amen. Is that good? And uh, now we do still have good relationship, but um, I, I've, I've counseled her the right way. You can go back to God. And now uh, if the, only if there is any need, we will pray together still. We can be that support person. We can be that encouragement or that shoulder to cry for someone when they are going through a tough times. But remember, you cannot become someone else's savior. Amen. You are nobody's savior. There is only one burden bearer. There is one refreshing living water. There is one intercessor, one helper that can come running to you any time of the day. He is no respecter of people and his name is Jesus. Amen. And don't neglect the vineyard or your heart which God has given into your care to protect and to take care. Also, we need to remember to respect other people's boundaries too. If others need some space, give them that space. Amen. The second one, boundaries in relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. The end of a matter is better than its beginning and its patience is better than pride. Any chaos in relationship is the lack of boundaries. God created boundaries from the beginning. A day finishes and the night starts. So he created the sun and the moon. He definite boundary lines be between the water and the land. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 he said, And the Lord commanded the man, You are free. You have the freedom. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. There is freedom that comes with boundaries. You are, God said, you are free to eat from any tree, but not from the tree, um, from the, uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because God knows you won't be able to handle the weight of having this knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge not only about um, good, but also about evil. So you, you won't have the discernment to choose the right from the wrong. So when, when you were a teenager, remember your parents told you to come home before nine? Or, or um, your parents tell, would have told you those times there was no... The, the playing games on the TV, but, but be careful not to watch some horror movies or not play some certain games, horror games and stuff like that because there is protection within that boundary. Any time we violate those safety bio boundaries, there is no safety, there is no protection, there is no freedom outside those boundaries. Amen. So that is why some of the, the parents put certain boundaries. It is for our protection. So uh, we know these um, Hallmark movies, sometimes they're too che cheesy <laughs> and always there is this one caring man come to help and rescue this young woman who's it's settling back in town and, and they always they, it ends up with a happy ever after. <laughs> and, but in reality, 
life is not like that always. It can, any twist can happen in a relationship. And um, there, there may be betrayal involved, there may be abuse or manipulation of emotional blackmail involved. This can happen between any relationship, between friends, between employer-employee, between family relationships, between parents or step-parents. So be careful not to fall into this toxic environment in a, a loop. Yet I've heard many abusive stories that has happened inside the house. Mostly women tolerate until it reaches their children. I don't understand why someone has to wait until it reaches the children. Your safety and your life is very important. You need to set the boundaries in your relationship. If there is some pattern happening on and on, you need to wake up. Don't buy into the deception and continue to stay in the toxic environment. Amen. I wanted to talk about that too because some people need to hear that. Even some family members or parents can be controlling and would want to know everything. It cannot affect adult children's married life. And sometimes you need to tell the parents, you, this is my life, you need to let me live. This is not being disrespectful or not honoring. Don't confuse that. I talk to my parents almost every day. And that doesn't mean she knows everything about my life. I take, I inquire, I check on her, I talk to her, all that. But she would not influence my life. Um, this is my vineyard, right? This is our life, our family, God has given. So we need to protect. It is my responsibility. Their responsibility was finished. Amen. So they did a good job. That's why you and I are here. And now it is our responsibility to Take care of our vineyard, yeah. our families. Amen. So um, this is uh, um, uh, guarding your and protecting your vineyard. As I read earlier, the end of the matter is equally important as the beginning. If you're dealing with a very controlling, manipulative person, it is not so easy to break free. Uh, boundary conversations are very hard conversations. There may be fireworks, there may be tears, there may be drama um, involved in such conversations. But trust me, you will experience such freedom and you will gain your respect back. So remember, it is God who set the boundaries from the beginning. Okay, So it's okay to have such conversations. And you need to be honest and straight up. When with such people or you become the victim over and over again by keeping quiet let me repeat that again let by keeping quiet you are not maintaining peace you are enabling the other person's bad behavior to run your life did you hear me that I have come across many people who keep quiet thinking they're maintaining peace you are you are empowering the other person's bad behavior. So you deal it with the strength of the Lord. God wants us to finish our race well in every areas of our life. Amen. All right. The last one, boundaries for dysfunctions. I'm running at the same time. I want to give the best um, teaching on this. Uh, so we will know we will not be taken for granted as God's children. Amen. This is, this is a very common issue, very common problem that I come across all the time. And um, the, because that it goes like this, they say, I've been hurt by this particular person and I know I have to forgive and I have forgiven them. And, uh, and now a situation has come that for me to go and make relationship with this person again, what should I do? What shall I go back? I got hurt once, and, but I'm, I've, as a Christian, I've forgiven, I've forgotten. What shall I do? They all constantly ask me. Oh, there is an incident in the Bible. Before I give you the answer, oh, let me read this incident. In Genesis, it's about twin brothers. They are Esau and Jacob. 
and Jacob is a little bit naughty. He disguised himself as his brother and he went and took all the blessings from his father, that is Esau's uh, blessing. So Esau got so angry with Jacob over this incident. And Genesis 27, 41 reads like this. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So Esau was literally waiting for his dad to die so he can go and kill Jacob. He was that angry. And so Jacob had to flee. He had to run away from that place and uh, to save his life. And nearly 20 years later, now he's coming back. And some of you probably would know. Now you read this whole incident in Genesis 33. I'm not going to read the whole passage. And now Esau, he, Jacob is giving lots and lots of gifts to Esau to peace him. He doesn't know in what mood he is in because he had ran away from him. You remember 20 years ago. And um, but Esau is coming and and saying, "Okay, I will accept all the gifts. It's fine. Come with me. I'm going. I'm going to." Um, uh, to uh, to spot is Seir. That's where Seir is the place Esau is living. And he says, "Come with me. I'll take you to Seir. I'm, this is where I'm living." But for verse fourteen, Jacob is saying, um, um, uh, sixteen. Jacob is saying, um, "No, no. You go ahead. I won't be able to come with you so fast because there are eaves that are little little sheep. The, my children are small. If I make them hurry, they might they, they don't survive the uh, the speed to your speed. So you carry on. I will come with you. I'll join you behind." Verse 16, so that day Esau start, started on his way back to Seir and Jacob, however, went to Sukkoth where he built a place for himself. Jacob somehow convinced his brother Esau to go ahead, but Jacob went exactly the opposite direction. With the encounter with Esau, peace was restored. There is no more anger. There is no more rivalry between the brothers anymore. He has given so much of gifts and he has restored the relationship, which is good. Now a time has come that he is coming to, come with me, let's live together and see her. And he said, goodbye, brother. He sent some goodbyes kisses him goodbye and he goes to Seir, he goes to Sukkoth, it's almost the opposite direction and Seir is in the south, Sukkoth is mostly on the northern part and this is a great example, they both reconciled but again when another opportunity came, Esau to live with Esau, he did not choose to go and live with him how often do we repeat the same thing over and over again and get hurt over and over again? We need to be wise. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I know we usually use this verse between believers and unbelievers. In marriage, marrying a believer, not an unbeliever. You know, this doesn't go very well. The actual original meaning of unequally yoked is to yoke a mismatch or to be yoked in unequal partnership. That's what it means. A yoke is a wooden cross piece that is used to connect the animal to the plow or, or to pull a cart. And so the animals on both, both sides should be equal to carry, the, to carry out the job of can the pull the weight so they should be equal not one is strong and one is weak you know so when someone they could be even a believer do not have the same values as you have or they have a different wavelength or when or when who would always put you down with their words and they always have a a negative opinion about you or they still have an opinion about your old self and they aren't constantly you're disturbed with them when you're with them do not yoke yourself with them to continue to take this journey you need to be wise you need to be careful 
it is wise to take uh, not wise to take the walk with them it is time for you to kiss goodbye to certain relationships to friendships if you continue to walk with them they will take you back to that same addiction they might take you back to that same lowest point you're not good enough this is who you are that's all you can you know that all that negativity they pull you back into that and instead say goodbye you can bless them and let them go you know um, goodbye um, the original meaning of goodbye means god be with e it got shortened and it became goodbye b y e and if you can think of goodbye as um god be with e instead of saying completely you're out of my life that means god bless you let me and i let you go amen some relationships you need to let them go out of your life if you continue to yoke yourself with that person and try to set things right and i'm going to somehow mend this thing well and if you are trying to work hard on that relationship it's you going to go they're going to pull you back to the wrong place and that's a bad position that you have come out of work so hard and this many times i have heard this people asking me what shall i do now this invitation has opened up should i go and be wise how did it end the last time be careful but that doesn't mean you turn your face and walk away you don't talk to them give them gifts that's what jacob did oh man you, you should see the amount of gifts he gave he gave so much of gifts he blessed him you blessed him abundantly he did everything that he could but he, he decided if i'm going to go and live with him in sia it may not end very well so let you i let you go to sia Uh, but i'm going to go to sukkot to maintain our peace to maintain our relationship with each other yeah. amen it's not worth going with to be with people to some places where you were hurt once forgive them give them gifts love them but don't yoke yourself with their life plans and ideas yeah. amen as i come to a close today How do you want to grow in solving issues when they come up in relationships? Well, somebody has said like this, spiritual growth is growing up your spine to stand up to certain things to say no. That is part of spiritual growth too. I had to do a lot of growing up. I had to grow up my spine. Yes was easy, no was hard. But sometimes we need to say no. To say goodbye to certain relationships. It just held dear for us. Do you want to flee or fight or handle it with grace? When it comes to boundaries, how is your personal boundary? Are you taking care of your vineyard? or are you allowing anybody to come and in and come and go any time how is your boundary in relationships are you letting someone else control your life boundaries for dysfunctions is there a pattern going on and you're constantly in a toxic environment you need to kiss goodbye to some relationships amen